Hi everyone, this is Miss Moriarty and I'm here to discuss with us our notes all about Charles Darwin. Remember, as you watch this video, you want to make sure that you are jotting down notes in our evolution notes. And when you are complete, please mark this assignment as done. So we did watch the video uh, called The Making of a Theory, all about Charles Darwin, as well as Alfred Russell Wallace um, and their journeys in which they took, uh, the observations, and eventually the conclusions in which they made about evolution and how we know organisms change over time. So we know that from our video, uh, most famously, Charles Darwin traveled to the Galapagos Islands found in the Pacific Ocean. Um, and that is where he gathered a lot of his observations, um, especially with his examples of the tortoises and birds, um, and collected lots and lots of samples to further his research um, about why species change and where those species might come from. Now, the Galapagos Islands are a group of about 16 islands, a thousand kilometers or so west of South America, as well as part of Ecuador. So we could see that the climate, um, so the temperature and, and precipitation in which these islands may get is usually quite tropical. And usually we'll see lots of biodiversity when we look at very tropical ecosystems. And so that's what Darwin observed. Now, another piece here, and this is kind of why he, he saw the varying species he did on each island. Each island had somewhat of a varying climate, which would have changed the environment those organisms ended up living on. And remember, he observed things like tortoises, there were iguanas, um, finches, were all species that he took note all somewhat resembled each other, but had slight differences between each of the organisms that lived on the varying islands. Uh, and it's actually the giant tortoises that tend to live on the Galapagos Islands. And remember from our video, it was the patterns and shapes of their shells that sparked Darwin's interest. We can kind of see in this image here, amongst the different islands, we can see a lot of the tortoises share uh, somewhat similar characteristics, but you can certainly tell depending upon what island they may have resided at, we can see differences uh, in the color of their shells, definitely a little bit of the, the shape and the patterns we can see. Now, when and, and how did he go about traveling to the Galapagos Islands? Um, well, the HMS Beagle arrived at the Galapagos Islands around 1835, and it was the HMS Beagle in which he sailed from England. Um, the Beagle sailed across the Atlantic Ocean um, due to detailed right, hydrographic surveys, um, and it was the captain that actually invited Charles Darwin onto the voyage because Charles Darwin was a naturalist. Now, when Charles Darwin arrived there, he enjoyed observing the giant tortoises and kind of pointed out that you can kind of tell which tortoise came from where, depending upon the island in which they came from. Um, it was also the mockingbirds or finches uh, found in the Galapagos Islands that continued to kind of further Darwin's curiosity. And each of the finches on the islands once again resembled a mainland finch. And more types of finches appeared on the islands where the food was available. So things like seeds, nuts, berries, and insects. And it, over time, those finches developed different types of beaks that adapted to the type of food that was on that said island. And so Darwin kind of concluded that one type of finch from South America had arrived on the recently risen islands, just like the tortoises, and adapted to the different opportunities found on each island. And it was later in his book, The Origin of Species, Darwin kind of drew heavily on these animals he saw in the Galapagos to kind of advance this notion that their creation was not just a, a single event that appeared by God, but it was a process of natural change from one form into another. And you can kind of see down below here, 
right? All of our, our finches here all have beaks, so they all share that characteristic, but the shape um, of their beak relates to the type of food that they were best adapted to consume on their island. Now, some of Darwin's observations, he saw patterns of diversity depending upon, you know, where those organisms were located. And this was unique to the adaptations we found in organisms. We know species were not evenly distributed around the globe. We saw in the video, right, Australia tends to have lots of kangaroos, but no rabbits. South America tends to really only have llamas. Darwin also collected fossils of both extant and extinct organisms, right? Organisms that are uh, way past, right, dead for long periods of time and organisms um, that recently passed away. And he used those to try to uh, compare and create his, his theories about why organisms might survive and reproduce and others may go extinct. He also discovered that left unchecked, the number of organisms of each species will always increase exponentially, generation to generation. And in nature, populations tend to always remain stable in size. Remember, this was due to Thomas Malthus's theory about human populations, but it also applies to uh, nature. It applies to both animals and plants. We know that more offspring must be born than will survive. We also know it's the environment that's going to play a role in, in the stabilization of these populations because it will serve as a limiting factor. He also observed individuals of a population vary extensively in their characteristics. So we see lots of genetic diversity. And we know much of that variation is inherited. And so what were his conclusions? Well, production of more individuals than can be supported by the environment is going to lead to some sort of struggle for existence. Right, there's going to be some form of competition over a shared resource. Only a fraction of offspring will survive each generation. And that brings us to the phenomenon known as survival of the fittest, right? And remember we said fit doesn't necessarily always mean the biggest, the strongest, and the fastest. It means the organism best adapted for its environment. And so he then concluded individuals who inherit those fit characteristics for their environment are then more likely to leave offspring than their less fit individuals, thus creating the evolutionary theory uh, known as natural selection. All right, guys, that is it for our video. Please make sure as you watch, you should have taken notes and please mark this assignment as done.